I used to see the expression a lot of times that said, I bet you didn't know. And I was always interested in that expression because it would impart some information to me that I usually didn't know. Well, I'm going to use that expression for our interview this morning. And, you know, so I'm going to start this interview. My name is Alex Havisham. Uh, and this show is the uh, name of this show is The Call to Action. And I have two uh, uh, phenomenal guests with me, and I'll let them introduce themselves. But I'm going to start with I bet you didn't know. You know, because this is the important that I bet you didn't know that you need to know. And that statement as it relates to I bet you didn't know that, and that is quote unquote, I bet you didn't know that AIDS, HIV AIDS, is still very, very prevalent in our community. And there, I'll, they'll correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think that there has been a significant downtick in, you know, the occurrence and the contracting of AIDS. And that is something that the whole community needs to know because there are some differences as it relates to prophylactics and things that people can do as it relates to address, treat, and prevent. Hey, so I'm so happy and I feel very fortunate and I feel charged, if you please, to bring this information to the community, to our viewers and listeners, because I bet you didn't know. But in addition to I bet you didn't know, I bet you need to know, you know, as it relates to this information connected with HIV AIDS. I have with me today, Mr. Cyrus Vance. Cyrus Shirley. I don't know. I know, I, yeah, I know some famous guy named Cyrus Vance. I'm sorry. I don't Cyrus. remember who he is or what he did, but you are not Cyrus Vance. You are Cyrus I don't think so. I Yeah, don't raise think your so. hand so you know I'm introducing you. Uh, Cyrus, just lift your hand up. Okay. And I also have with me Dr. Allen uh, Wells. And, uh, you know, let's first of all, we'll begin with you, Cyrus. Just take two or three minutes, if that long. And introduce yourself, and then we'll we'll uh, uh, share uh, Dr. Wells the same privilege. Okay, uh, it won't take me that long. I'm not that important, but my name is Cyrus Shirley. <laughs> I work as a communicable disease specialist here at the district North Central Health District here in Macon. I've worked at the district for about 30 years, but the last 20 years spent mostly with HIV and AIDS. Okay, very good, Dr. Wells. So my name is Alan Wells. I'm a work in the Division of Epidemiology. Communicable Disease Health Educator. I am um, a public health doctor and I've worked and been around AIDS for about 37 years from cradle to grave. And I'm honored to be here today. Um, and I hope that some of my experience, strength and hope in the field can um, help engage the community more, learn about the problems and the solutions. Okay. And you know, the key word, ladies and gentlemen, is the word engage. And then, you know, one way or another, either directly or indirectly, whether we know it or not, this uh, phenomenon, if you please, uh, affects all of us. And so there's something that everybody can do about it, either directly or indirectly. So Dr. Wells, if you would talk uh, just a little bit generally about the disease. Well, HIV AIDS is turned 40 years old officially this last year. And as you know, AIDS is a, is a viral transmitted disease that is found in bodily fluids such as blood, semen. And it is um, very, very prevalent. The most prevalent place in the United States and in the fastest growing in the world is the Southern United States. The Southern United States has the fastest attrition of new HIV AIDS cases. These are in the South, primarily in the states of Louisiana, Georgia, and Florida, with the exception of being the District of Columbia. Georgia has the highest rate of new seroconversions. And within these seroconversions, that means when a person transform from, goes from having the virus come into their body and having the virus replicate and become established into their body. I call that a zero conversion. The blood has converted 
to that virus building up its factory inside of your body and reproducing itself is in Georgia. 70% um, of the cases in our district in Georgia are among people of color and young people, people under the age of 30. So it is largely in our profile in the United States and in Georgia, an African-American disease primarily among men of color, next women of color. And it, that is a shift demographically for the history of the disease where it started out in metro areas among more diverse, not really a diverse, more of a diverse population, but mostly in homosexual white men when it first came about in the 80s. So that transition is why here in middle Georgia, when we fight uh, HIV, we really want to work with the community and, and raise awareness about its toll on the African-American community. Wow. Now, I, you understand, uh, not Mr. Vance, uh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Shirley. Shirley. <laughs> I understand that you've been uh, working out there in the field for uh, over two decades. So talk about, you know, what your role has been, you know, uh, traditionally, you know, wh what are some of your activities in trying to educate, prevent, et cetera, as it relates to HIV and AIDS? Uh, well, I started out um, a couple of years back uh, initially as a health, public health educator. And in fact, we had a specific program called HIV and Correction. And what uh, I was in charge to do at that time was to provide HIV education, counseling, and testing to both male and female inmates in our local county jails, covering our 13 county district area. Uh, from then, I sort of transposed into a communicable disease specialist, at which now, we cover other SCDs, syphilis, gonorrhea, chlamydia, but still concentrating a lot on HIV and AIDS. So I've been sort of going in and out of the community uh, for, again, about 20 years, health fairs, few churches here and there, and any other organization that would invite me, that was comfortable enough to invite me to come and share that information with. That's important. I'm glad you used the word invite because we don't want to complete this interview without letting the community there know that, that, that both of you are available. I would think to go out and talk to church group and community groups and neighborhood groups and everybody else because we really, really, really want to hit this thing education-wise in the head with a sledgehammer. And then in order to do that, then that information needs to be disseminated and circulated uh, to everybody. So, uh, you, uh, uh, Dr. Wells, you, I, I thought it was interesting that you said young people, you know, the, 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 the trend has shifted from, you know, homosexual white men to basically uh, African, the African-American population, and even more specifically uh, to young, young, young people. So talk a little bit, and you may as well go ahead and... Uh, introduce MSM, because yes. that's something the, the community needs to know about. So just talk about what may be causing that shift. Well, um, first of all, when we say MSM, um, that's different. You notice we made, we used two words in the introduction. One was homosexual or gay man, and then we changed that name to what we call MSM, and MSM stands for men who have sex with men. And the reason we use that word instead of homosexual or gay is because homosexual and gay infers an identity or a statement of like, who am I as a person? But what we're really talking about with risk factors for HIV is behavior. So the behavior more specifically is, the behavior is men having sex with men. So for example, if I was to take a history, a sexual history or a risk factor history of someone for HIV, I wouldn't say, are you gay or are you homosexual? I would say, do you have sex with men? Do you have sex with women or both? And that is a behavioral aspect that allows me to talk about their risk factor in a more objective way. Similarly, and I'm gonna hand this over to Mr. Shirley because he truly knows a lot more about it working in the field in our communities but um, if you talk about men who have sex with men, 
sometimes that behavior is not out in the open. It's, it's hidden, it's clandestine, it's not talked about, it's stigmatized. And that is one of the reasons that AIDS can proliferate more fully because when you have a problem that you don't talk about, the problem persists. People may be afraid culturally, people may be afraid socially, people may be afraid to talk about their, them taking these risk factors. So as an educator and as a scientist, of course, we say men who have sex with men because we want to talk about that risk factor without judging the person, without saying anything except talking about that behavior. So that's a very common term when you talk about AIDS in Georgia and in the United States. Say MSMs, African-American MSM, African-American men who have sex with men, not African-American gay men, not African-American homosexual men, but African-American men who have sex with men. I was going to say another reason you uh, they use MSM uh, simply as a category. Uh, one of the things about men who have sex with men, men have sex with men for different reasons. So uh, you really can't fit them all into just a gay box. For example, some men have sex with men because of their situation. For example, they might have been incarcerated for a long period of time, and so now there's no one else in there but them. And so sometimes they tend to relieve themselves because they're, they're the only ones there. Um, sometimes, unfortunately, sometimes people are forced to, um, maybe through, you know, a violent act or violent sexual act, you know, out in public. Uh, then there's others who, that's what they're, uh, uh, that's what they are integrated to. That's what they like doing. That's their, they naturally gravitate to other men. So with having various reasons for men to have sex with other men, you can't categorize them as one such. And so since there's so many other things, you just sort of group them as whatever uh, the behavior, whatever the behavior is, that's how we're categorized. So if you have sex with a man for whatever reason, you fit in that category. Okay, that that's that's important. And and so Dr. Will, you are saying that that's really, really very prevalent you know, the MSM, African-American MSM. Now, I mean, although it's maybe to some people alarming and concerning, but it actually exists. Now, so what would be, you know, what would be the, you know, how, how, how does the, how should we address, how should we address addressing that? You know, I mean, what are we going to try to 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 advise and educate the community toward as it relates to? Because if you know, uh, you know, last time I checked, insanity is doing the same thing and expecting a different result. Yes, well, we're not going to be insane about this. <laughs> we want to inform the community. We don't want to embarrass anybody, and we don't want to necessarily alarm anybody. But it's something that's very, very concerning because, as you say it, the disease is on the increase. So how how should that be handled? I mean, what are we going to suggest and how are we going to educate? So I'm, I'll just start with this. With the, the, the Georgia strategic plan to reduce and eliminate HIV in African-American MSM starts with the men who have sex with men themselves. Number one, making sure that men who have sex with men, African-American men who have sex with men in Georgia have access to condoms and safer sex practices, have access to testing for HIV so that they know their status. You'll hear that again and again and again in our messaging. Know your status, just check your status. We, we have HIV tests that are instant. You know, Mr. Shirley and I can sit down with you and you can, stick your finger like a diabetic stick, and within seconds, we can tell you whether or not you are positive for HIV. The third thing is um, for people that do have HIV to encourage them to get into treatment, because when you are in treatment with the newer drugs, you are unable to effectively transmit the virus. If the virus is controlled in your body, you have an undiagnosed, un traceable amount of HIV because okay, the drugs now, are very effective. Okay, I want you to, now, I think you need to repeat that you know, because so, that's significant and I, and I don't know whether that's new or not. 
but I had heard well, it's a great it's a great accomplishment and it's it's new for over the past several years. If you do have HIV and you go on the medications, which are free and available to you in this in our in our region from the health department at our Ryan White Clinic or other clinics, if you take sometimes only one pill a day, you can get your level of virus in your body to undetectable and you are not able to transmit the virus to others. So it's become controlled. And that's very important because if you wanna end transmission, you have to stop it. And there's two forks in that road. Number one, you don't have it yet and you don't, you're don't you not gonna get it. Second fork in that road is you have it, you wanna control it. And possibly the third part of that that we have in our toolbox now is what we call pre-exposure prophylaxis, which is um, a, pill, a, pill, a medication you take when you are HIV negative, but it will completely, almost 90% to 95% keep you from transmitting the virus through sexual contact. Okay. So there's three ways to control it. So, so if you are in fact negative, but if you are part of the MSM population, yes, then are you saying that there is a medication that even if you engage with somebody that's mm -hmm. HIV positive, that that medication can uh, likely prevent you from uh, contracting yes. AIDS? Yes, it can. However, we we do prescribe it and say that you should still practice, say you should still engage in safer sex practices along with taking that medication. But the medication, I've heard some people say it's like it's almost like birth control for for AIDS. It's like you take that and you have a, another another layer of safety, so it can be very important in controlling the disease. Well, I guess it's important to send that information out generally. Uh, uh, um, necessarily, because for the most part, and you correct me if I'm wrong, uh, there are several people in this population, and I think Dr. Allen, uh, Dr. Will mentioned it, that, that, that are secretive and clandestine. So I guess, you know, you all are charged with trying to get this information out to uh, these individuals without, you know, embarrassing them or anything of that nature, yes. but yet to inform and to educate them, you know, as it relates to the availability of all of these resources that That's can right. kind of drive down these very alarming numbers as it relates to HIV AIDS. Either one of you can comment on that. Fact. Yeah, Mr. Shirley, Mr. Shirley has done this in the field many, many times. And let, why don't we let him talk about it a little bit? Well, you know, at one time, uh, initially the, the state strategic plan was to uh, educate all people who were HIV negative. And the thought was if you can train the ones who are negative, they won't become positive. Unfortunately, that has not worked out so well now. So which, as Mr. Allen said, the plan now is to uh, treat people, find those people who are positive, treat them because, he, as he said, when you're taking antiviral medication now, it stops the virus from growing in your body and makes it less likely to spread. So now the concentration is on finding people who are HIV positive and getting them treated. Uh, with the hopes of not spreading it to ones who are not HIV positive. Okay, now I, I noticed that there has not been a whole lot of conversation. And then I mean I, I really don't want to be alarming, but I think that that a lot of women, frankly, will be interested in know knowing about that phenomenon that we've got a lot of people who don't consider themselves as necessarily gay but um, then they fit in that category uh, of men having sex with men. And in many instances, they are probably having sex with women too. So what would be, I mean, talk about that. So if in fact, uh, MSM contracts a, a man having sex with a man, and then he in fact uh, engages uh, with a female and he's already positive, then what happens? 
Well, in many cases, the, the, the woman will seroconvert, of course. The woman will catch AIDS from her partner. And this is common, not, you know, not only in this, all around the world, with MSMs who we call it, um, in America, we call that the down low. Um, someone who is, has um, some sexual behavior that they don't want to talk about with their, with their partners. And many times, even with MSMs, you'll find that the same phenomenon. It's like, okay, I thought my partner was faithful and I trusted them and we had unprotective sexual intercourse and now I myself am positive. And so both, both people in the relationship are positive. And that's why it's very important to have testing and um, open and honest discussions about these sorts of things. Again, the three layers, promote safer sex practices, get people on pre-exposure prophylaxis and treat people that have it and that will shut the virus down on those three gateways. However- Let me I'm interrupt you very quickly. Yes, sir. Very quickly, I'm sorry. Because I, I think personally, and you all are the experts, but I think that there has to be, there has to be a way where we can create a bridge or an avenue for MSMs to make contact with you all. You know what I'm saying? Because I doubt if many of them are going to walk in and say, hey, I'm in, you know, publicly. But I believe that if, in fact, and that may, I, I, hopefully there is a way that let's say somebody out there who is an MSM and who is very concerned for a lot of reasons. First of all, age is, age is a serious disease. You can be sick the rest of your life. If not treated, I'm sure that sooner or later you can die from it. And then you could, if in fact, you've got a partner that you love, you can give it to them. So what would be that approach? That approach? If somebody knows that they fit in that category, and are conscientious enough, if you please, to try to address it and, and, and go to the, and, and let me say this quickly for both of you. The, your organization is a phenomenal resource. You know, talk yes. about prevention, treatment, and education for free. Yes. You know, so how, how can we get, you know, how can we move the button as it relates to this? and get these people to come in? Well, one thing I want to say, uh, the opportunities are there. Uh, public health is, has been out front for years. Uh, and before I answer this, I want to also say uh, that download phenomenon is not a new thing. It, it's been around for years. And people are quite comfortable with it. Uh, it's just I think we have some problems in our community with how we relate to one another, uh, which kind of helps exacerbate why it's spreading so much in our community. I don't just think it's uh, just about social determinants and, and that kind of thing. It's just some of our, our behavior, I think, attributes to how come the spread is so high. Uh, but, and, and getting back to what you, uh, originally, what was your, your question originally? I want to get back to that, but I want to say that part first. Originally, you were asking. I, would, I was asking, you know, what we want to do, the purpose of this show is called a call to action. Okay. And I want to say, what's the action that a person can take? You know, if right. in fact that there is something, some kind of category in which he or she, he or she fits so they right. can, they can let, they can, they can access the services that you all provide without, you know, exposing themselves or being embarrassed or anything. Well, well, one of the things we need to do in this community is find a way um, to lower stigma. And so we need for our leaders to assist in lowering stigma so not to uh, down anybody that lives a certain way. And let's be honest, uh, we talk about MSMs uh, as if they got to go out and brag about what they do. None of us want to talk about what we do in our, in our private lives. And so uh, we shouldn't just so much beat on them so much. Uh, what we need to do is teach people how to protect themselves, how to make changes in their lives so that they won't put themselves at risk for HIV. And get tested. I mean, you know, we um, basically had a, we had a wonderful public service announcement from our new attorney, this uh, district attorney, Anita Reynolds, 
saying get tested, know your status. Uh, the, the Ryan White Clinic, which is the HIV AIDS clinic in middle Georgia, serves over a thousand patients and they just keep coming. And this means that we are in a crisis. And the first step if for anyone that's concerned about it is call us and get a test. You can get a free HIV test. You can call us. We can, you can do a private confidential test at your, any of your 13 local health departments in every county in middle Georgia, from Sparta to Arlington and all over, all the middle of Georgia. And we, you, and then if you uh, test positive, if you have a reactive test, there's a whole series of events that starts right then. We have funding from the federal government. It's called a special project of national significance in middle Georgia. It's called the rapid initiation of treatment. Once you're diagnosed with HIV AIDS in middle Georgia, we have a mandate to try and get you within treatment within 72 hours. And the data and the evidence show that if you put someone in treatment right away, they're, they live longer. The transmission risk is next to nothing in the community. So those steps engage, get tested, get in treatment if you need to. Okay, now how, what does one need to do in order to get tested? And then I guess, I guess what we're trying to say that even if you fit in that MSM category, then it behooves you to get tested. And yes, I'm sure true. that they can have a conversation with anybody in your organization, a confidential conversation. Yes, sir. Absolutely. So how should one approach getting tested? They should make a phone call or go to the internet. What's that process? About your, your... So there's a, there's a um, you can go to your local health department. There's a, a, a QR code I can show you. You go to, we have a clearinghouse page and you can test your way. That's our new campaign. You can test my way. You can do it at home. We'll send you a kit. And you can, so you show the instructions. You can do it in your own bathroom or your living room. And nobody has to say anything about it. We'll go to your house. You can go to the health department and do it. You can go out to a community. We go out in the community from time to time every um, every couple of weeks, where we'll do a public site for testing. You um, you have a number of different options, but you can get tested in Middle Georgia, and you can do it your way, by yourself, confidentially in a clinic, any way you want. Okay, yeah, how any, do you, go ahead. I was just going to say any 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 health department in any area offer free HIV testing. Uh, one of the reasons we're so happy to do this show is um, because if you call the district, there's also, as, as Mr. Allen mentioned, home testing available. Um, even when we go out and do educational health fairs and, uh, and talks, we also, especially here at, the, at this particular district, maybe unlike some of the other districts in Georgia, our, our communities, especially, will actually come to you if you wanted to get a test maybe you have problems with transportation, uh, you're concerned about privacy, we'll actually come to you. And so anytime we're out doing an education event, testing event, you can come by, you can get our card. Uh, if you're uncomfortable going to the health department, you're concerned with privacy, you can actually get our number and we'll come to you and test. Give that number out. You got it. Can you give well, us that number? Well, actually, my number is uh, 478-751-6224. That's the record to my office. Okay. Uh, and so you can call me if you wanted to get tested. Call me, we can set up a time and I come by your home and I give you that HIV test on the spot. It only takes five minutes and we'll get testing and depending on how much time you got, we'll provide you whatever ed education you need, provide you with condoms to protect yourself. And if you're positive, at that same time, we'll also set you up for treatment in that same uh, occasion. Yeah. Now, what is there a general number of uh, Dr. Wells, uh, for, for a general number, just in case, maybe they don't want to specifically be tested, but want to call mm -hmm. the, the health department it's for more so information. Right. And, because, uh, because we cover 13 counties, and I'm at, I don't have all 13 uh, health department phone numbers up here, but maybe we can get that to you. Yeah, so we, can post it. we can give you a number. To, we can post each health department so 
whatever county or area that person is, they can call that local health department and get those services done. Well, if you'll get that to me, we can stroll it okay. across the stream. Okay. We, 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 okay. we can do. What about website? Is, uh, is the information available on how yes. the it's it's on it's on our website and um do you want me to run down and get that address real quick no no we'll we, we'll, we'll scroll, scroll it on the we'll screen. scroll it and edit and yeah. we'll scroll it on the screen we'll, yes sir I'm sorry. okay well i mean we're running out a lot of life to me. you all you all have done a phenomenal job of educating the community and uh uh there will be other uh programs ed educational programs initiatives uh, announcements, uh, flyers, social media posts. So this is just the beginning of a major campaign that we are engaging in to get the community educated and informed and hit this HIV thing, AIDS thing in the head with a sledgehammer. And it can be done, it's on the rise, but I'm so happy to know that there are programs, yes. prevention, treatment, and education that will help to address and curtail this uh, phenomenon that we have with the increasing of AIDS and MSMs and other factors affecting the disease. The good news is that there is something that can be done and we are encouraging everybody you know, to do what you need to do to protect yourself, uh, your family, your significant others, and the community. This is a call to action. You want to say something about right quick? Yes, sir. Just in, in closing comments, I would say if anyone listening today is afraid of engaging because they're afraid of knowing their results, hope there is hope out there. Because even if the worst possible case is you test positive for HIV, there are medications that can be given to you free of charge that can keep you safe, keep you alive and healthy, and make you undetectable. So don't be afraid to take that first step and know your status. That's very important. It is very important. I'm so appreciative of you, gentlemen. Uh, this is a call to action. I'm your host, Alex Habersham, having interviewed Mr. Uh, Cyrus Shirley uh, <laughs> and Dr. Alan Wells, both of whom work for uh, the Department of Public Health and have uh, and are engaged in this initiative to address the problems that we're having with HIV AIDS in our community. Uh, take heed. Uh, I really appreciate you guys. Uh, we'll throw your number on uh, and the internet the website on the screen, and I'm sure that together we can make a difference. Can, can I say one more thing, Mr. Harrison? Hurry. HIV test is not just for MSMs. Mm -hmm. It's for all of us who engage in unprotected sex. Okay. That's true. Yeah. And yes, on yes. that note, this is a call to action. I'm your host, <laughs> Alex Harrison. Have a great day.